Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and welcome to this DxO Photo Lab 8 review. So what is DxO Photo Lab 8? Well, it is a photo editing studio for both PC and Mac. They are two Photo Lab editions for you to choose from. The Essentials Edition costs 139 US dollars, whereas the Elite Edition costs 229 dollars. Now, there are many differences between the two editions, but the critical difference is that the Elite Edition features DxO's Deep Prime noise reduction technology, the best photo denoiser that I have tested to date. Now, you could buy DxO's Deep Prime technology on its own in form of DxO's Pure Raw package. However, Pure Raw costs 119 US dollars versus the $90 premium between the Essential and Elite Editions. Thus, while I consider the Essential Edition a stone-cold bargain for what it does, the Elite Edition is better value overall. So let's talk about what Photolab 8 does, beginning with photo management. Unfortunately, photo management is DxO Photolab 8's weakest attribute. So what we can do is we can rate our photos, we can assign them various different manually generated keywords, we can put them into two different projects and we can even geotag them. However, to geotag them, we would need a third party application such as Google Maps to generate the coordinates. And then we would have to copy and paste those coordinates directly into Photolab 8. Unfortunately, this is a bit of a clunky process because we have to split the coordinates into latitude and longitude thus making it a little bit of a tricky process. The XO Photo Lab 8 does have a rather nice search feature, which leverages your photo's manually assigned keywords and metadata. So for example, we could use the search option to certain date, or indeed with a certain camera or lens. You can even combine this criteria for even more specific results. But in terms of photo management, that is all DxO Photo Lab 8 is offering. There is no face recognition technology that enables you to browse your photo collection by those who appear in your images, nor can you leverage object recognition technology and search your images for features within them, for example, architecture or lighthouse or birth as you can with some other applications. Thus, if you value photo management as much as photo editing, you might consider an alternative such as On One Photo Raw, ACDC Ultimate, or of course, Adobe's Lightroom. So with photo management out of the way, let's talk about photo editing. When it comes to photo editing, DxO Photo Lab 8 does not disappoint. If you're new to photo editing, DxO Photo Lab 8 comes stocked with many different presets, giving you sort of a one-click route towards a well-processed image. And when you do finally come round to doing your own edits, you will find DxO Photo Lab 8 to be stocked with all of the usual adjustments, plus many more. But critically, its interface is very well presented, very customizable, and extremely responsive. In other words, Photolab 8 reacts to your adjustments in real time. While DxO Photolab 8 is excellent for manual editing, it does feature some automations. DxO Smart Lighting enables you to rebalance your photo's exposure by pulling a slider. So in other words, it will sort of reel in those highlights and boost those shadows and mid-tones for an overall brighter image. And we also have DxO's Clearview Plus a sort of uh, dehazing tool that adds additional contrast to your image. I'm also a big fan of Photolab's color wheel. Here we can take the drop tool, sample a particular color within your image, and then adjust that color's saturation, luminosity, and hue. But you don't always want to edit your whole image anyway. Sometimes you just want to edit specific objects or areas of your image. And to that end, Photolab 8 is extremely well equipped. Photolab's most unique feature is probably its control points. So these control points look much like dots and we can place these dots over certain areas of the image you wish to affect. We can then expand the control point's radius, creating an ever larger circle. And what will happen is that every subsequent adjustment we make will only apply to that tone within the specified circle. Now, I suspect control points sound a little bit more complicated than they are, and I agree they do take some getting used to. 
If you're looking for a quick fix, you can still, as always, brush on your masks manually. If you're in a rush, you can use the auto selection tool, which gives you the opportunity to sort of hastily brush on your mask. And then DxO Photo Labs Edge Aware technology will try to make sense of your sloppy brushing and refine your mask. Photo Lab A also features a brand new hue mask, which works similar to the color wheel in that we can sort of target particular tones within your image and mask them. And then there's a the good old fashioned graduated filter, the sort of digital equivalent to an ND filter that's ideal for sort of covering skies and sort of bringing down exposure on the skies for a sort of more balanced sort of landscape image. I'd also like to talk a little bit about the retouch tool. Now, in a recent video, I was very impressed with Photolab 7's retouch tool. However, I seem to have noticed some regression in Photolab 8. When processing exactly the same image, I got much better results with Photolab 7 than I did with 8. I'm at a loss to explain this, but if you are a Photolab 7 user who commonly uses the retouch brush, you might want to try the free Photolab 8 trial first. So, so far, so good, but we've not really talked about the two things that make Photolab 8 special. It's optic modules and deep prime noise reduction technology. So when you open Photolab 8 for the very first time and begin importing your images, Photolab will ask you to download various optics modules. Now each optics module profiles the unique characteristics and flaws specific to each camera and lens combination that you use. So for example, Photolab may download an optics module for an Olympus OM-1 with a 25mm lens attached, or indeed a Nikon D70 with a 70 to 200 mil lens attached. With these optics modules in place, DxO Photolab 8 will be able to perform highly precise, tailor-made optical corrections and image quality enhancements that are pretty much beyond the reach of most other photo editors that I have tested. As a result, any image you open in Photolab 8 will look instantly better even before you've made a single edit. Then there is deep prime noise reduction technology. Now, those of you who have been following me for a little while will already know that I consider the older version of deep prime noise reduction to be among the best there is, perhaps even the best. And I'm happy to report that this latest version, deep prime XD2 is just a little bit better still. Now in another video to find out just how good Deep Prime XD2S is, I put it up against the very best, including the older version of Deep Prime featured in Pure Raw 4, as well as Adobe's Lightroom, Topaz Photo AI, and On One No Noise AI. And quite frankly, XD2S beat them all. Now XD2S isn't perfect, like all other editions of Deep Prime, it doesn't work on JPEGs, only RAW files, and at least for the moment XD2S does not work with Fuji's Xtrans files. Thus, if you are trying to denoise your Fuji files within Photolab 8, it will fall back to an older edition of Deep Prime. Now one of the downsides of Deep Prime noise reduction in Photolab is that you couldn't execute it in real time. In other words, we couldn't apply the noise reduction and then continue our edit. Instead, the noise reduction would be applied at the end of the edit when we exported our image. To sort of help with this, Photolab 7 featured a sort of tiny window in which we could sort of preview the effect of the deep prime. Now, Photolab 8 has a brand new feature, the loop tool. The loop tool is kind of like a digital magnifying glass, and we can drag this magnifying glass to the part of the image that interests us most. Here, through this magnifying glass, we can see up close the effect of our edits and also the effect of the deep prime noise reduction. So, while a loop tool is a fantastic new addition in its own right, it is also improving the entire deep prime functionality of Photolab 8 and is probably one of the worthiest reasons to upgrade from Photolab 7 to 8. So let's say you've got this far into this Photolab 8 review and have decided that perhaps Photolab isn't for you. Well, what else would you buy? Well, if you are looking for the easiest, fastest, laziest route to an exceptionally well-processed image, you might start with Luminar Neo. 
Now, Luminar Neo is what we call an effects-orientated photo editing application. Now, this means instead of having a range of abstractly named tools that we used to craft our effect, Luminar Neo gives you the effect up front and thus is stacked with tools such as Golden Hour Glow Foliage Enhancer and Sky Enhancer. We also have super power tricks, if you like, in the form of a portrait bucket AI, a background blurring tool, and also a very neat and fun sky replacement tool. However, Luminar Neo's photo management is as undernourished as Photolab 8. Luminar's noiseless AI noise reduction technology is many leagues behind Deep Prime. And overall, the entire interface feels a little bit slower a little less precise and is certainly less customizable. Then there's Adobe's Lightroom. Now Lightroom isn't quite as capable as DxO Photo Lab 8 when it comes to editing photos. However, its photo management is a night and day improvement. For example, we have face recognition technology, which enables you to browse your photos by those who are pairing them. We also have object recognition powered searching, which is to say if you type in a bumblebee, it will go through your entire photo collection and pull out every photo featuring a bee. Furthermore, Lightroom leverages the cloud like no other photo editing application. Because it uploads your images into the cloud, your photo collection is in effect untethered from your PC and available to all the usual devices such as smartphones, tablets, and of course, other computers. Not only does this make accessing and editing your photos much easier, it also enables you to distribute your photos to family, friends, and clients with ease. However, this huge benefit comes with a significant downside in that Adobe Lightroom is subscription only. Specifically, Lightroom with one terabyte of cloud storage will cost you $9.99 a month, a fee that you will never ever stop paying. In contrast, a DxO Photolab 8 is available for a one-off payment of 139 or 229 US dollars, depending on the edition. This makes DxO Photolab 8 a considerably cheaper alternative, particularly if you're unlikely to upgrade your photo editing software for quite some time. So to conclude, is DxO Photolab 8 worth it? Well, yes, it is. Now, as we've mentioned earlier in this review, the XO Photo Lab 8 isn't the finest choice when it comes to photo management. Thus, if photo management is of value to you, you may want to consider some of the alternatives I mentioned earlier, or at least augment the XO Photo Lab 8 with a dedicated photo management tool such as ACDC Home or Milio Photos. But when it comes to photo editing, the XO Photo Lab 8 is quite special indeed. Its interface is fast, responsive, and precise, and it is packed with all of the usual tools, plus many more besides. We also have DxO's rather wonderful optics modules that all but guarantee fantastic image quality. And then there's Deep Prime noise reduction technology, the very best photo denoiser that I have tested to date. Overall, Photolab 8 is a great choice if you prioritize image quality above all else. Now at this point, I would like to own up and say, indeed, I am a DxO affiliate. However, I am also an affiliate for Adobe, On One, Skylum Software, ACDC, and more. Thus, I am sort of impartial through saturation. But if you'd rather not take my word for it and would like to try Photolab 8 for yourself, you can. And there is a link to your free DxO Photolab 8 trial in the description below. If you'd like to know more about Photolab 8, do drop by my written review over at silentpeak.com. I hope you found this review useful or at the very least interesting. My name's Richard from Silent Peak and I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.